What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of The Locker Room. I'm here with John Bateman. What's going on, brother? How are you, mate? You all right? Yeah, I'm good, man. It's, uh, I'm stoked to have you on, obviously from England. And it's, it's funny, it's like I was with my missus and we'll message each other on Instagram. And I was like, well, he's actually talking in Pommy in Instagram. And I was like, but I didn't, I didn't remember that you had just come across. How's it hasn't been the, the, the change from, you know, obviously England to Australia? Yeah, I probably have me on way of talking to the fans <laughs> also. Um, yeah, it's been good. Um, managed to settle in pretty well. It's, yeah. Obviously, it's a big big move for me coming over from England and stuff and getting over here in January. It's, it, like I said, it'll probably one of the warmest parts of the year as well, so that'll probably one of the biggest yeah. things for me to get used to and settling pretty well, a bit enjoying it. And it's... Um is it when when Australian like obviously the boys put shit on you? I, yeah. I assume the boys put shit on your accent. When Australian players go over, do the boys put shit on their accent? Yeah, we didn't really get many Australians okay. at Fingy, so when we did, we made sure we, <laughs> we made sure we give it them to the fan. They have certain words and stuff like that, so we did tend to get stuck into them. Like probably most of the boys have done here. To the fan <laughs> every time I'm like Sam Burgess, obviously every time I post his name yeah. I write it S-A-M-M-E-H yeah like the same just to see how he likes it <laughs> um, but yeah so you know it, the decision to come over I assume you know you, you're playing great footy you're playing for your country walk us through the pro- how did it even begin to come about um, to be fair probably like beginning of, last, beginning of last year I was in talks with Wigan about sorting out my new contract and when obviously that came about um, my agent spoke about obviously Australia and the opportunity to come over here and I had Elliot on phone to me the last couple of years to fair say ask, ask, just tell me to give it a go and stuff like that and saying how much I'd enjoy it because obviously I played with Elliot at Bradford OK so that's Elliot Whitehead yeah Elliot yep. Whitehead so it's, then, ever since then my agent obviously put it to me and I said yeah why not have a look and yep. got in touch with Canberra and stuff like that and there were a couple of clubs but Canberra were, were the one that obviously I wanted to give a go at obviously having uh, odd years, odd Josh Hodgson there as well and yep. Elliot Wired. So once it once it the sm- once it started going it like a snowball effect in a way, it's obviously one thing leads to another, you start talking, they start talking mm. and I more or less got my deal sorted, got it over the line, but then it was the club sorting out between them two. Obviously okay. Wigan was saying they wanted X amount and Campbell was saying, Right, we'll pay this, we'll pay that and yep. I think it was just it was more waiting on them to get it sorted than what okay. it was me really. So once my contract was sorted I was just Left, left out of it, and then it came about. Obviously, them do arguing over, no, we want this, we want yeah. this, and I'm like, fuck, it just gets it. <laughs> but yeah, it's, was there any well, point where you're like, fuck, I want to be going? Yeah, yeah, because it gets to a point where it goes on for that long. You're like, is it actually going to get sorted? This, yeah. The more and more it goes on, the, the less chance you think it's going to get sorted, and yeah. Because Wigan were saying we're not going to budge, we want this from him. And yeah. throughout the year, I've, I've managed to get nominated for the Man of Steel Award, which is over in England. And that came out, and then Wigan all of a sudden wanted a bit more. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, oh, so ah, it's, right, yeah, yeah. it's like one of them. It's, once it got started, it was a big relief to firm it. Yep. And so was it, because like, that'd be mentally hard because like you'd be like, all right, I'm going, I'm going, they'll sort it out. And then it doesn't get sorted mm-hmm. out. So you'd start kind of in your mind saying, look, I've got to accept that I'm going to stay here. Mm-hmm. So I don't get let down if I don't go. Yeah, yeah, big time. Because I also had one year left on my contract at Wigan, so yeah. I thought if nothing happens here, I'm still going to be here a year. Yeah. So it's, it just ended up going. Like I said, I'll probably more in touch with my agent. Like, What's happened today? Yeah. Is what happened? Is like I'll let you know, and mm. you don't hear it for a week, and you're like, Fuck, when is he? Yeah, you yeah. don't actually let me know. And is he actually doing anything? Yeah, yeah. What's, what's going on? on? Yeah. I'm on phone to him saying, yeah. yeah, what's going on? I want some news. And yeah. Probably more just tit for tat really and just like yeah. probably leaving them more to sort it out. You're obviously the two clubs on the agent really. Mm. And was there who was the closest club outside of the Canberra or was it you know usually like the from the start it's kind of like, I really you know Canberra has a few pommies there and everything like that. Yeah, probably Canberra was pretty big and uh, probably Newcastle Knights. Uh, Nathan Brown tried to sign me when when I were, when I was coming through as a kid before I signed my first contract. Oh, because he was over in England. Yeah, it was all the time and me and mum went to have a look around and. Um, I, I just eventually chose Bradford to sign there then he then he obviously tried I think there was some when he was at St Helens I remember him being at St Helens mm. his assistant was Sean Long at yep. the time and I remember him getting a phone call off Sean Long and he was just like oh what do you think of the opportunity and I, I was at Wigan that time and if you're if you're from England, you know the the big rivalry between Wigan and Sydney. Oh, okay, Sydney. they hate yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah, like hate South each other. And yeah, yeah, more or less. And I thought, nah, I can't, I can't be that player. <laughs> God, <laughs> that makes that decision. So I didn't, I didn't really think go through, go through with it type thing. So, but then, um, 
the opportunity came about coming over to Canberra and then Newcastle were involved. But then once I started talking to Canberra and everything went from there, it's, it, it made my decision pretty easy to be fair. Yeah, no, it's it's um it's just crazy. That, like we, you know, there's two rugby league worlds. Like we both play like mm. rugby league, but you know, there's like this whole environment over here mm. that's just like existing of yeah. footy. And then there's a whole Australian comp as well over here, and it's just it's just strange to hear all the different things going on. Um, so growing up, I mean, as I was talking about earlier, I played soccer, football. Apologies, uh, I played football growing up, which is soccer here in Australia. That's the Australian way to say it. Um, and in England, like the pathways for football is everywhere. Like in the sense of like, if you're a young English lad, you dream to play football. What was it like for you growing up? Was it always rugby league or? Um, yeah, probably. I'd probably say so. School probably more benefit, more football wise. Everyone, mm. everyone wants to play football type yep. thing. But for me, my, my family were pretty big Bradford Bulls fans, and yep. um, I didn't really start playing until like ten years older. I oh, used yeah. to. I, I didn't really. It wasn't really for me to. Play. I just really, wasn't really interested. And my brother, my brother used to play. And, since he started playing and stuff, and I started getting a bit of trouble at school and started fighting with my brother, and my mum said, Right, you're going to rugby, that's one way to take your aggression out. So, oh, really? ever since that, I really, she just sent me, to, sent me to play rugby, and ever since then, I just fell in love with the game, to be fair, mate. That's funny, it's like your mum just like knows yeah. you need an outlet <laughs> for this aggression. Yeah, she, that's, yeah, it was pretty good. We probably took it off, took it off her a bit to fair mate. It's, yep. We'll probably give him give her a tough time as as two two two, two, like, two young lads growing up and probably yep. just helped her a little bit. Was it she a single mother or <laughs> yeah yeah single oh, okay, mother? Single mother. Wow. Yeah, we see my dad and stuff like seeing my dad as a young kid and stuff. But mm. it, it was always my mum. My mum yeah. looked after us. I always say this, man. Like I don't care what you do, single motherhood would be the hardest shit in the world. Yeah, definitely. I oh. tell me after him to a fair. It's it's a, t- it's a tough going. I'll give him that. And two aggressive young boys. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, it's torture. Yeah, we wouldn't have it. We put we want the best as kids. Yeah. Uh, everything we everything I, he wanted, I wanted, and everything I wanted, he wanted. <laughs> so we just want them to. There's only three years apart, so yep. I just want them things that we. The but, same. That's the same distance as me and my brother. Yeah, and cl- clashed heads on pretty much everything. <laughs> to fair. What about? Did you both go for Man United or? Nah, he's a Liverpool fan. Unfortunately. Oh, just like my brother. <laughs> yeah, so Any uh, punch-ons? <laughs> nah, probably not punch-ons, but we've had we've had, <laughs> some, we've had some arguments and. I've lost some money to him over the betting and yep. he's lost some money to me, so yeah. Mate, you'd be putting it over him now. Liverpool <laughs> yeah. are doing nothing. Yeah, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of them. It's, Actually, yeah. they're... Oh, they, no, no, Liverpool... They're Liverpool, going all right. Yeah, Liverpool are cl- close at top at the moment, But so. wasn't there a few years, like... Yeah, they just struggled. They was, struggled heavy. Yeah, I'd give it to him hard and yep. it's opposite way around now, so he's, <laughs> he's giving it to me hard. <laughs> like, me and you and I will always be better than yeah. Liverpool. Like, you fucking... Take, Liverpool is our little baby brothers. Um... <laughs> I don't even follow it anymore, but <laughs> I, I, when I yeah, growing up, I obviously loved Man United yeah. and that. Uh, so, so as soon as you started playing, so you say rugby, you were playing Union? No, no, rugby, rugby, rugby league. league yeah. um, so as soon as you started playing rugby league, was it immediate, like it clicked and you were decent at it and made the rep sides or was it you know a slow process? Yeah, pretty much to fair. I started playing at about 10, I think it won. I used to always play a year above because they didn't have an age group in my age, the club that I played for, Dudley Hill, yep. who called and... I didn't have an age group my age, so I always played year above. And most of the lads who played for that team went to the same school as me as well, so I just ended up being like best mates with most of, the, most yep. of them. And it just went from there, really. Mate. It's, I started playing, I took, took to it pretty well, to the fair. Enjoyed it pretty yep. well. I just love the physical side of it. I love getting stuck in and stuff like that, especially being a year above. And you know what I mean? It's a, it's a bit more of a test, I'm yep. probably saying. It just went from there, really. But more, it worked out, the lads in my team, they. It, it, over in England you, you get to an age where you start obviously playing rep side and stuff like yep. that obviously like Yorkshire and Lancashire and stuff like that and yep. you, I couldn't get picked for Yorkshire at my age but obviously the lads in my team could because they were a year above so mm. then when that then I knew I was playing with lads who were playing with Yorkshire so then it pushes you a bit further you want to start doing that yourself okay. so probably helped me playing a year above and yep. ever, ever since then really it just went on and you kind of a your skills are going to be everything's going to be better, yeah. mm. and you get the confidence as well. If I'm going well on this side, that these boys are making it, it's mm. going to give me the confidence to kind of push on. Yeah, definitely. It's, you know what I mean. You take the confidence from like you're playing probably against bigger blokes and stuff, bigger lads and stuff, and you, like you said, you take confidence from that. You know, if you can do it at this age, when I drop down at my age, I'm going to be going to be a standout in that age. And eventually, I did have to drop down when I got to 16s, I think, because everyone signs for professional clubs then, or, yep. or they just go their own ways. And I had to drop down, but then. I, drop, I end up dropping down, but then they managed to keep a team on 
uh, for under 17s at what yep. Dudley Hill and I, I went on and played first call it like what would you call it over it's fairly amateur level but first grade so it's like it's like amateur amateur not yeah amateur still really but would it be like New South Wales Cup yeah yeah probably but you're playing with men type okay. thing. anyone yep. can play for that yep. then I went to I played played for Dudley Hill the open age there so I played played with them for a few games so I was playing with blokes who were like 30 odd year old and I was still like 16 so Fucking yeah hell. It, it probably you still in the back row then or no nah, when I play then Played loose forward. I played a bit of halfback to fair, just where you could get your hands up. Halfback, <laughs> yeah, just, hell. just running about and chucking yep. balls all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> he never fucking passes yeah. the ball. He just runs it. <laughs> just carrying out. Yeah. Um, okay, so you, you kind of always were there or thereabouts when it came to yeah. playing ability and stuff like that. So when when did they, the club start coming to you and saying, mate, you know, we would love you to come to this club, come to that club, or? Probably about 14, it was. Probably oh, about wow. 40, 14, 15, you, you start getting people saying, oh, you can make it if you do this, you can mm. make it if you do that. And at first, you're like, yeah, of course, I can. You, you, you can tell this to everyone, you want them obviously to come to your club and stuff. Yep. But when you start hearing it continuously off people, and like, I can do have a chance here, it's, you know what I mean? I can take this seriously. Yep. And it's, that's probably a big thing. Then when you get interest from various clubs, and there's a few clubs that want to want to take you on board and stuff, it. He probably does think in a little bit more, but obviously that's not, you haven't really done much there, but that's a big step in getting the first yep. contract. And from from there, really, it's probably that well a bit where you have to start taking it serious. You can't, yeah. you can't be messing about at school and stuff like that. You can't be messing mm. about out, outside outside school and stuff. You can't be doing probably what your mates are still doing at that time. So yep. you have to probably start reining stuff in and taking it a bit seriously. And so, who was the first club that you signed with? Bradford. I signed. It was, fun, it was pretty, pretty weird though, because I left school at September time, I think it was. Yeah, I left sep- September time, I think. Yeah, it was September. Then I signed for Bradford literally two weeks later. So I went straight from school into full time. So oh, full time. Yeah, I signed as well, yeah, not even resi. Yeah, yeah. Like so I went straight into full time. Wow. Played a few games for the under 18s. I think it was about three games I played for them, but then went into the reserve side, played mm. about five games for them. Then I think I went straight into play the first team. I remember my debut, oh, just turned yeah. 17, I think I was. Holy so, shit. Yeah, I was still... Still a baby, yeah, bro. Yeah, still a baby when I when I went to that. So, a pretty big pretty big step for me to fair. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you don't realise how big of a step it is until you actually do it. And yep. But when you play your first game and you've got some look steaming at you, it's... You know, fuck yeah, it's like, like, what I'm is doing? I'm ready for this. Yeah, 100. You know I mean? And you look so, across and they're all just big men. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's one of them, it's... You start questioning yourself, am I ready for this, am I yep. good enough type thing, so yeah. So you get the contract and they say, we want you to come train in first grade squad. How did that all, How did that actually come about? What was the call like? What was it? Yeah, it's, obviously Bradford will be in my own town club and when I got the contract, I got one from Warrington as well, Warrington wanted me to go full time as well yep. and I was just, I don't think, that, at the time I, I had my little girl, she was, she was born when I was just leaving school. To, so, oh, so, so, so 16? Yeah, I just gone 16. So I just I was on 16th of 30, uh, 30th of September, and she was born on 9th of October, so nine days later early. So bro, yeah, I'm, 30, I'm 32 <laughs> next week, and that would wig me out. <laughs> it wiggled me out. Bro. I'll tell you that. <laughs> just, walk us through that. I mean, as a young man, I mean, I'm sure you just got caught up in the momentum of everything. Yeah, but yeah. did it scare the shit out of you? What was it like? Yeah, it's honestly, I didn't. T- I don't think I told anyone for like six months. I think it was. I didn't tell anyone at all. And, all of a sudden, we started having sex education classes at school. Everything that I watched on TV was to do with babies, and I was just like, "What the fuck?" So, so you you were like, you found out that she, your partner was pregnant, yeah, or yeah. is she your ex partner or partner? Yeah, ex partner. Ex partner is pregnant, and then you started getting sex education at school. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> so you were just sitting there going, "Oh my god!" Yeah, I remember saying to one of my mates, "I was like, this has got to be a joke. This. Why is it everything?" Like I told one of my mates, and he was like, "Just tell someone." I'm like, man, look, I can't, I yeah. can't say oh. Like I don't want to, like you just, you wait for it to go away in a way. Yeah. You think, oh, it'll go away, it'll be all right. But yep. If I have to voice it to everyone else, yeah, it becomes yeah. a reality. Yeah, yeah. And you don't really want to do that, but yep. then nine months later, I had to do that. You know what right. I mean? It it's things. a much lesser example, but it's kind of like bills. You just, yeah. if you just yeah. don't look at them. Yeah, you chuck, <laughs> just chuck them on one side. <laughs> They're not going to be there. The next minute, and then you get the next bill. <laughs> um, and so at, at that point, um, I don't know whether you would be thinking about this. Were you like, shit, my footy career might be on je- in jeopardy here. I might need to get a job and all that kind of stuff. Probably, yeah. But then when when I got offered the full time contract, I was like, right, I know that. Okay. When that happens, I'm I'm going to be able to support my little girl. You know what I mean? In a yep. way that obviously I needed to, and probably more so. I probably the reason 
I'd probably had to knock a few stuff on the head what I was doing off the field with, yep. with my mates at one point with bed or I'd just signed a full time contract on there, a bricklayer and yep. you know what I mean, they can go and out from out Friday out. Friday to Sunday, mm. turn up for work on Monday and they do the same thing all week and yep. It would probably that's that was the biggest thing that I had to knock on it because I, I had a little girl and I had to provide for her. It wasn't, I couldn't just toss it off and go out on weekends and get smashed all weekend yeah. and turn up for good because it wasn't going to work for me if I did that. And I probably went through a period where I walked Bradford did, for some reason they turned around and said to me I only had to train from Monday to Thursday. I didn't really have to train weekends. And I remember one of my best mates, it, like he'd, he'd been there for me from from as a kid and yeah. like and we were always good mates called Liam Harrison and. I remember just saying to him and every Thursday, right, come on, I'm going out. <laughs> went from went out Thursday, Friday, and all like, what am I doing here? And it got to a few week, few weeks down the line. And I remember having my birthday, and we were still only 17 this time, so we weren't even old enough to go out. Yeah, so, shouldn't even be drinking. Yeah, yeah. So I remember we were sat out. I, I, I was just rough after my birthday. I'm like, man, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> oh, really? So you woke up after your yeah, birthday, yeah, going, yeah, mate? What like, am I doing? Yeah, and a bit of a reality, reality check type thing. And, you probably go to training then and you're not you're not with it, you know yep. what I mean, type thing. And you're not jumping, you know, yeah, you're not you're really not ready to go. And I was still yep. a young kid, this is what I've been working for all my life and mm. then from there really just just went on from from there, just training mm. hard and stuff like that and everything takes off really. It's like uh it's crazy how life works, you know, like you have your kid and it's mm. you, you think it's I mean, it's it's a blessing, a massive blessing. Mm. But before you have the kid you're sitting there going shit this could yeah. affect me negatively like you're thinking of all the selfish things yeah and definitely. yet and then yet it turns around to be this like godsend best thing, ever, yeah. best thing ever you have you know this beautiful girl but it also motivates you to be a better mm. person that mm. you may not have had that a lot of young boys in that situation they don't have that extra thing to go you know mate you can't keep getting mm. out and getting pissed and, yeah. and they go the wrong way yeah definitely it's, like you said you probably you tend to be a bit naive. You don't think it's gonna. Yeah. Bo- like, well, when when obviously she, before she was born, I thought I didn't think. Oh, like, right, I won't be able to do anything now. I'm, yeah, I'm gone. Like my rub is gone. And stuff. Like, you do. You think you're gonna forget. Like you think you're gonna lose everything in a way because yeah. you've got you've got to provide for someone else. But yeah. on the other hand, when the, when when she was born, it was like right. Yeah. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to be more. I need to get something out of the things that I'm doing instead of just tossing them off type thing, you know what I mean? It gives you an aim and a goal yep. to try and get to that type thing. Turns you into a man, you know? Yeah, like, 100%. You know, and like it's, like all, it's like all, mate. It's, you, you probably don't want to grow up as that fast, but when it happens, when it gets put on your doorstep, you have to do And like you said, it turns you into a man and you have to really step up. You can't, it's, you can't it's go so about doing the things that you're doing as a kid. 100%. It's so crazy when, I mean, you, you would have had a different experience because you had a kid, but you look back, some, I look back sometimes when I was like 17, 18, 19, 21, 22, <coughs> and I'm like, I thought I would fucking knew shit back yeah, then. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know, know nothing. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, I'm sure when I'm 40, I'll look back yeah. now and go, mate, you didn't know anything. Um, but yeah, that's it's okay. So you get the contract, you're training the house down, and was the debut, well, how did the debut call come about, and was it shocking, surprising? Um, well, I, 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 I rate him for man a lot, just like literally yep. running corner on for, for the kicker and stuff like that. Like, what you do for 18th man, you warm up, then you just put water boy for the rest of the game. Oh, like, so, in England, the 18th man is usually the water boy, yeah. That's what that's what it used to be like. So, what? they usually take corner and stuff like that for, yep. for the boys and stuff. But I remember we played, we played Salford away on our 18th man, and we got absolutely, I got absolutely hammered. And yep. I just remember Mick Potter, Mick Potter was a coach at the time. And, and he's from Australia, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. He, he came, coached Tigers? Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. He co- came up to me and said, are you ready for next week? And I was like, yeah, 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 sweet. And I, you don't really, you don't really take it in it because yep. I was like, oh yeah, of course, of course. Yep. But then we played, we played Catalan away, the French side, we went down to Catalan and that's when the, we had a big pack and I was like, oh, I'm sure I've got to come off the bench here and just get into the game. And he yep. right, you'll be starting loose forward. And I'm like, shit. <laughs> so loose forward is lock, locked yeah, in? Yeah, yep. yeah. And I remember about, must have been about 85 kg. And I was like, well, mate, what am I going to do here? 85 kg. <laughs> yeah. Far out, that's so small. Obviously, because obviously we're in France, so yep. we come, none of the family came over type thing. So yep. they all watched it on TV. I just remember, I remember my first carry, I made about 10 metres, I thought, yeah, it's a good carry this, and they literally picked me up and took me back about 20 metres. Oh, I swear like, to God. Shit. It's because you didn't have the body weight <laughs> yeah, to get yeah. down on the ground. Just like, yeah. you think, wow, what's going on here? Then yeah. I think my second touch-up ball, I think I think um, the halfback was stood behind me and I was going through like as a, as a blocker. And the halfback kicked the ball and it twatted me straight on back head. <laughs> so and, and he gave an accidental offside. And I'm like, oh, shit, <laughs> this what's is going on? <laughs> I'm like, I'm not ready for this. I'm not yeah. ready for it. But was, your sh- was your jersey all baggy as well? Yeah, proper. Like, <laughs> I, 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 absolutely pissing it down as well. So, like, it's, it just turned into one Did you just win? 
we drew. We ended up drawing. Uh, so was that a good or a bad result for you? Pretty good result to a fair yeah. So that I took one positive out of it. So it that way. <laughs> not out in France or what? No, nah, we didn't. I don't think we went out. We, I think we had a short turnaround that week, so yep. we got back and I played the week after. So I thought I must have had some confidence in me and just yep. gradually just went from there. Really. Did you stay in the side for the rest of the year? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but I, like when since ever since being a kid, I, I've always that's been one of my aims. Like if I'm in the side, I want to stay there. Yeah. I can. I remember I signed for Wigan and I hadn't I played. I, I hadn't played and we had, a fir- we had the first game of the season against Huddersfield and yep. our 18th man for Wigan and I'm like, right, once I get in the side, I want to stay there. And yep. I've just tend to try and do that every, everywhere I've gone really. Yep. You know what I mean? It's That's what you want to do. You, want to, you don't want to dip in and out of a spot. Oh, you, yeah, nah, you want to be no consistent way. with it. So You want to lock, lock that spot down so that, um, so that they essentially someone has to be playing so unbelievable mm. like they've got to be a world beater yeah. that they've got to take your spot which yeah. is so hard to do if you're consistent in that spot yeah definitely um, wow that's crazy 17 years old bro I debuted <laughs> at 19 and I thought that was crazy yeah. 17 wow fuck um, so so, the, so 2000 um, so 2012 rolls around did you upgrade your contract in that um, yeah yeah I think I did I, yeah I think I did I played the first year and then halfway through the second year I upgraded my contract okay upgraded my contract but uh, Bradford when I upgraded my contract Bradford <laughs> went into well t- about two months after went into li- liquidation like they were struggling like with club and stuff so holy I shit I remember I couldn't even drive at that time I remember getting in I, I, my, my granddad used to take me to training yep. but he dropped my mum off first at work so I remember being in the car with my mum and granddad and put radio on and they're like, oh, Bradford have entered administration and all that. What? what? Like, I've not heard anything about it itself. So, like, not heard anything like on WhatsApp or anything. And yeah. I was just, I was sat there and my mum was like, can't be, can't be true, can yeah. I? Like, nah, sure, I, I just signed a contract to stay at my own time club for like the next four years, I think it was. And it was a pretty good contract for me, age. Yeah. Like, it was really good, well, to be fair, it was a really good contract. Yeah. And like, you were stoked, like, yeah. living the dream, everything's yeah, great. Yeah, everything was going well and stuff, playing, playing first team. Just signed a new contract, and I remember, remember it being on the radio, and I'm like, hey, "What's going on?" And my mum like, "Just get to train and just see what's cr- what's your, see what crack is really." And yep. just from there, it's, they went in administration, came out of it, went back in it, and did it a couple of times to film. We, we got to a point where we didn't we didn't even train one week. We do like right, we're not we didn't have we weren't insured we weren't insured to tri- to train in case we got injured and t- stuff like that. So, so it was just like the pits. Yeah, just literally probably in dumps really. And Elliot Elliot were there as well at the time, so I do like. A, quite a few local lads you know what I mean I think yep. Elliot had not signed a contract just to like he signed pretty si- similar time as me as oh, well so well, yep. we were just like what's going on here type thing managed to get out of it then went back in again and it just went like that really it was just throw with throw type thing it's, we didn't really tend to get over that I'd probably say as, as a club as so are they, um, are they they went down they dropped down into two divisions below but they managed to the, the, the league below the Super League now so okay. they're working their way back up but okay. so I think it got to when when I ended up leaving to go to Wigan it was more or less I, I went in obviously I was like right I'm not up here I want to I wanna play rugby I want to play rugby at a high standard and Bradford run about I think we were bottom of the league at that time because we yep. got I think eight points deducted at the start of the season because we were wanting Certain like ter- like we didn't meet criteria for the Super League type thing. What? Yeah, no, so they deducted so, points from yeah, you. Yeah, so something like that, something along them lines. And yeah, I just remember going in and I'm like, right, I'm not happy. And yeah, it came about the week that we the week that we didn't end up training. We played Wigan on on that weekend, mm. and it was supposedly the last game we were going to play. Bradford's last game because obviously if we didn't get sort it all out, and obviously I played against Wigan and I got man at match against Wigan. I can, oh. It's probably one of the best games I've played since, like, <laughs> really? probably because I haven't trained all week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fresh as yeah. the day, ready to go. So, I remember playing that game and <clears throat> after the game, Sean Wayne, the Wigan coach, like, oh, well played. So, so I didn't really say much and went about it. And when it came back to Bradford, obviously, like, we need to sell players and uh, Elliot was one of them. He ended up getting sold to Carlin and I was one of them who got sold to Wigan. And yep. it just came about, Wigan were like, right, since the game I played, Against them, they're like, all yep. right, we'll we'll put we'll put us faith into you type thing, and yep. they paid, I think it like hundred thousand at the time for, yep. to to hundred thousand like eighty thousand something like that. To, it's to, too bad to, for to like Bradford, a, yeah. a gun gun plugger. Yeah, and, and Bradford needed it at the time as well, so I yep. was like, right, I'll, I'll I'll go, you know, type thing. So it just went from there really. And so that year, okay, so that's two thousand twelve. Yeah, two thousand twelve. Um, so two two thousand thirteen. 
you're with Wigan 2013. I think it's, I think it might have been the back end of 2013. Or okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So yeah. in the off season, yeah. So you signed a three year extension. Yeah. Um, and then okay, so okay, so then you sign with Wigan. Yeah. Three year contract. Um. And so, so two thousand. So that would have been two thousand and fourteen. Now. Yeah, two thousand fourteen. So yeah, yeah that's and when I signed with Wigan, because I. I brought my ankle the 2013 season yep. and uh, my, I signed for Wigan the, that pre-season <coughs> obviously going from there and so uh, okay so two, 2014 so your first game essentially out, outside of any trials was it against um, the World Cup Challenge in yeah. Roosters yeah yeah wow, what was that like yeah it was pretty so you were 13 playing 13 no I played back row. Oh, well, sorry I came off of the bench on the bench I came off bench yep. um, came off bench to play back row I remember lining up against Boy Corden and yeah. I'm like shit, what's going on here? Yeah. You know what I mean? My first first game for, I think I was only nineteen at the time as well. So you're still only nineteen? Yeah, still on nineteen. Holy shit. Signed for Wigan when I was nineteen, so it was pretty, pretty surreal for you to say obviously being at Bradford I was a big club but at the time they were a little club for what we were doing and stuff and yeah. managed to sign for Wigan, they'd just come off a back back of winning the double. They won the Super League and the Challenge Cup the year before. So yeah. I was like, why are they even signing me? You know what I mean? Like do yeah. you even need me type thing? Yeah. So then from there we went we had obviously World Cup Challenge where the two teams play each other and I remember looking at Roos's team and I think Sun, Sonny Bill Williams, all, they all played at Minicello, Boy, Boy Corner, the, Joe Riagri, Frank Paul <coughs> New Sala, they had a team full of... Was it, Mitchell uh, Pearce. Yeah, yeah, Mitchell Pearce. Was, um, was Maloney still there or had he gone to the Sharks then? I, think he, I don't think he, he yeah. was there. So, yeah, Mitchell Pearce, um, I think it was Jackson Hastings maybe would have been. Yeah, it might have been. Um, Two pro and oh, you know what I mean? The, they had a team where you're just like, wow. Yeah. And, and I remember he said, all right, you're coming off the bench. Yeah. So I know, like, yeah, yeah, sweet. And it was just, it was one of them games that got away from it. They were just too good for us on the day. You know what I mean? It was yeah. One of them, they were different, different class type thing. But yeah, you know, all across the park. Yeah, yeah. all across. You, you know, when you're taking carries, you're like, okay, well, we, got, well, we started off pretty well to be fair. Yeah. We're like, oh, we've got a chance here, and they just it's like they turned like, turned it up another another yeah. level and just blows out blows off the water to be fair. Yeah. Got it's like when you play, like for example, even in the NRL, like. When you play the Storm, for example, mm. have you played the Storm? Yeah, we played them first third game, I think. It I was don't know whether it's yeah. it's still the same, but when when we played them, like every tackle, the wrestle was perfect. Yeah, like every tackle. Mm. Whereas like you play other teams, and it's not, it's still, it's like ninety percent of that perfect yeah. or whatever. And I assume it would have been kind of similar with you guys when you play the, the Roosters. Like every tackle was yeah. like heavy impact. Yeah, good yeah. Wrestle. Every every carry you get, and you're getting whacked and stuff yeah. like. You know what I mean? I think I think Jennings what the centre as well. I think they had Boy Corner Jennings and Tupu on the wing and on that side and all that. This yeah. is crazy. You know, like, but you know what you're up against that thing. But I've, I suppose playing my first game there, you know, there's a level where you need to be. Yep. And I, I, I probably I probably always set that level of when I wanted to come over in, over to Australia. I've, I've said that I, I need to be. Yep. I need to be at a certain level to be able to come over here. When did that? Um, did that? Was that the initial first time where you started thinking like maybe one day I could go to Australia? Or was it before that? Nah, it probably uh, probably le- probably later later on. Yeah, yep. I, po- I just wanted to play for Wigan to a fair that time. Yep. I wanted to get myself a spot. In Still in nineteen. Yeah, you know what I mean. I, yep. I'd just come from Bradford and I wanted to I wanted to state my state my spot at Wigan type thing and yep. just stay in, stay in the team now and be consistent with it. And so t- so that two thousand and fourteen season, did you go? Did you start on the bench or did you start in the no, the next game I started at back row. Okay, and then you kept from, your spot? Yeah, it's, but from there I just kept my spot type yep. thing. So, like I said, like I said earlier on, that was my goal. I wanted to make sure I played well every game. Obviously, you're going to have your ups and downs, but probably not, not at 19, probably later on, about probably like 20, <coughs> 21. I always, I always said if I do have a bad game, I still want it to be at least a, like Solid. a seven, a yep. seven out of ten. You don't, you don't want your bad games to be a three and your good games to be a nine. Oh, you no, know what no I mean? Because then you, you get probably tarnished as one of them players. Like, oh, yeah, Not some so days, nice. yeah, he's, he's, he's all right one day, but then the next day he yep. might be shit type thing. So, mm. and so you played. Um, so 2014. Did, did you guys you got to the qualifying playoff? We got to grand final. 2014. Yeah, I think 2014 we got to grand final, and we, we lost to St Helens. See, Soliola played. Oh really? Okay, yeah. so he's, dra- he's at raising. So you're 19 years old. You make the finals. Yes. Yeah, it's... Are you just like, what do you do when you run yeah. out? We played. We played at Old Trafford as well, Man United's oh, round. So, packed. Yeah, absolutely rammed. Like, Holy shit! Probably as a kid, you, everything you dream of playing yeah. in a grand final. You know Old what Trafford. Mean? Yeah, it's probably as well because it was my first year. 
you, you, you dream, you want to you want to play there, and mm. oh, they've done it last year. Probably won't do it this year. It's not yeah. our year. Then when we got there, like oh, we came off at bench, came off. Sorry, I came off bench in the grand final, um, and it was just you know, like a surreal feeling, you know. Yeah. But probably probably losing that year for me probably made it more. The fact of right, I want to win it now. Yeah. I want to get there again next year. I want to, I want to do it the year. You know what I mean? Yeah. It probably gives you that more because you've experienced. Just so the the whole week building up to it, you go to Old Trafford, you have a look around, and just like just everything. It's, yeah. it's it's madness. It's things you only dream of as a yeah. kid, and to to be able to do it, like you get get all my family in best seats in Old Trafford. You look up and you're like, hey, and you're in here? like you're in Old Trafford. Like yeah, your yeah. family knows about Old Trafford. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm a, I'm an Australian. Yeah. I know about Old yeah, Trafford. Yeah, it's, just packed house, and I've, I've been to watch Bradford, Bradford at Old Trafford as a kid. You know yep. what I mean? Yeah. To be on the other side playing on, like I remember when I was sat up in clouds and top seats. Yeah, like, those no You know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, it was a good experience to fair. And so you, um, so you, the next year, 2015. So you lose that final. What was the score in the final? <sighs> I won't be able to tell you to fair for honestly. I got 2015. What was it? Not, uh, pretty, pretty close. Yeah, pretty close game. Um, okay, so yeah, so the next year you play the World Club Series against the Brisbane Broncos. Yeah, was that cool? Yeah, pretty good to face. Um, we went, went to extra time. Oh really? Yeah, managed to take it to extra time, and I don't know if you've seen it, but when Anthony Gellin ran out and charged the penalty kick down, it, Corey Parker, Corey Parker were going for a two point. It, they got a penalty and went in extra time, and obviously they went for went for goal. And yeah. We were about 20 metres out and Anthony Gellin who played at New Zealand Warriors yep. he, he was my centre at the time and Corey Parker's just gone running up to take kick and he just ran he charges down. down can you do that? no nah, you're not allowed it's just, union eh he just started walking off the field <laughs> going right yellow card <laughs> what did he was he just like he's just like <laughs> I don't know to do that <laughs> I don't even think not gals knows what he'd be doing it, but so he's just like I'm yeah. gonna do it I've never yeah. done it before I'm gonna do it yeah it was just yeah yeah, it wouldn't have mad moments. Fun, <laughs> okay, well. So did you then up winning or no? They we ended up losing. They won by two points that, that year. Bloody! Oh, because he would have had to retake the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To yeah. Retake <laughs> he obviously kicked it. <laughs> so pretty, did the boys pretty, give it to him, bro? Nah, it, it, pretty, it wouldn't have that. You literally put your phone on straight after, and everyone's doing rounds like, "What are we doing?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like yeah, it's on, it's that's on. hilarious. I'm I'm surprised he got there. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Good, pretty funny meter. Fair. <laughs> fucking fucking oath. Um, okay, yeah. So 2015. Um, did you so uh, challenge? You played the Challenge Cup. Yeah, we got to. I think we managed to get back to the final again in 2015, and we lost to Leeds. Leeds oh, Island. really? So that's three grand finals in a row. Two, two. two well, for for yeah. me, for, for Wigan it were three, but for yeah. me it were two. And um, Leeds, Leeds had like some big players going out on the day, like they were yeah. retiring. I think it was Kevin Sinfield, Jamie Peacock, and Kyle Lulai. Yeah, we we're, were winning. We we're up. And I thought oh, we're on here. We've, we've got it, and they yeah. managed to come back and pick us to a fair. They were a pretty good side. They had, they had a pretty solid team back then. Sinfield, isn't he like? Yeah, a, legend over yeah. him. You know what I mean? He's it, been he's been class for years as well as Jamie Peacock and yeah. Kyle Lulai were were good good players as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they had a pretty good team, and they got us and. Probably, probably more that year uh, more than what the second first year did because oh, really? you sat there thinking, "Am I ever going to win? Am I, am I yeah. ever going to win this?" You know, like I mean? yeah. I'm, like I remember a couple of other lads. You know what I mean? Were like, Fuck, "Are we ever going to win this?" Like, yeah. Do you think? Do you think? Well, we, you get them people. I played in what, five grand finals and never won them. Oh. Like I just don't want to be one of them people. And no way. At least just give me one. Yeah, yeah just one. Just yeah. wanted one, and he just went on like that. But I think that year I made I made my debut for England that year, so it was a bit of a. Bit of a plus, oh, plus so side, for yeah, England. plus side from obviously coming from losing grand final, then we went into England set up. So, so you were what, twenty to twenty one that year. Twenty, twenty, yeah. 20, oh, right. So you so. get the call up for England. How yeah. did that come about? Yeah, it was pretty good to be fair. Steve McMahon, the bloke who signed me to Bradford, he was a England coach okay. at the time. So just went from there. Really, just rang me up. Right, you coming in the squad and obviously playing, playing, playing for England type thing. So. Just went from there, really. Just got in the squad. How did the jet white and <laughs> felt red good. jersey? <laughs> it felt good. It you felt put that really on. Good. And you're singing the national anthem. Yeah, we we played my debut. We played against France. It was France at least Sports Village. Yep. In front of about 500 people. <laughs> 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 hey. they, don't, they don't really take much to fair England, <coughs> England and France games, but yep. I managed to score two tries. I just literally, wow. just literally. One's where I was just pushing like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. just fell over that line. But so what, what did it feel like for you personally? You put on that jersey, the red and white jersey, you know, iconic red and white. Yeah, yeah, it was good. It was a good feeling to fair, mate. Yeah. You dream as a kid playing 
for playing obviously for first team. Then you once you do that, right? Yep. I want to be, be a good player in first team, play at first team. Yep. Dreams of kid playing grand final, and you you want to the dream that you probably never really think of you're going to get to is playing for your country. Person, yeah, it's so it's, big. Yeah, it's so big. There's yep. so many people yep. trying trying to do the same, and yeah, when you when you get to do that, it's it's probably up there one of the best feelings, yep. best feelings you could have ever ever experienced. To fair mate, it's really good. So you, the 2016 season, um, yeah. So you, you get you come back. Did you start playing good footy and everything? Yeah, probably. Obviously, you don't click straight into it. I've had. Yeah. It's like I had eight week off. I think it was. You know what I mean? You, yeah. You, you try to find your lungs for a start. You know I don't I mean? know, especially in the middle <laughs> there. Blowing, blowing out of my ass when I first yeah. came back. But you seem to get you seem to get back. We were playing good rugby as well. Yep. The team was so. I just fit straight into a, a team that were playing good rugby. Yeah. So much easier. Yeah, it just went on from there, really, mate. And so 2017 rolls around. We, um, I think we ended up winning. We won, oh, you won it 2016. Yes. Yeah, so oh, no, what it, it so turned out to be. Right. Uh, yeah. Terrible time. No, great times. Terrible times. At good times. Yeah, so, so what was that like? You run out. A good met to fight. Really good. Yeah. You know, something that I think probably more so. We had a few people moving on. It was okay. only 2016 as a team and a squad and stuff. So when that came about, we we're like, right, let's get together now and go. We're, had some shit throughout the year and stuff, and yep. when that came about, we were like, right, let's let's dig together and like, let's get this, and we yep. managed to win it. And best three days ever after. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that, I can, that I can remember. Do you know how much you remember? Uh, uh, how much you won by? Um, what did we win by now? It won, I won't be able to tell you off the top of my head if I'm yeah. honest with you. But, but it was, was it a convincing good. win or? Not nah, pretty close again. Oh, pretty really? close against Warrington. Yeah. yeah, it was good. It was, it was just one of the things you. Everything as a kid, you grow up when you yeah. you see you see teams lifting the trophy and that just a bit of touch of trophy. You're like, wow, oh, I this is it. Yeah, I remember going up to taking the trophy up to uh, uh, end of the game, obviously into the um, into like lounge bit where my family were, and I was yep. just like, mum, mum, look here. This is like the trophy, yeah, yeah. But, like to my brother as well. Like, it's just a surreal feeling. Yeah, man, it's, it's a pinnacle. Like, yeah. what, how do you get better? You don't, that's. That's the thing you just aim to stay yep. there. Don't you? It's one of the things that you want. I reckon like, you could you would pass up every rep side to win that. Yeah, hundred like, percent. Like to win that grand final. What it means to you, like growing up as a kid. So seventeen uh, rolls around. What was the set? So seventeen. Is this when you started thinking about Australia? A little bit. Yeah, yeah a little bit. Because obviously my little girl were getting a bit older and stuff, mm. and she was obviously getting a bit older, so I could talk to her more and yep. explain more things, but. 2017. Well, I don't think we had that good of a year. We were going to fail. We finished probably the lowest. We finished. Yeah, because you'd lost but, a few players as well, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. And we, it was just one of them years. Of the backlash of winning it. You yeah. Think, you, you get and you get comfortable in a way. Four grand finals in a row. For four them grand as well. finals. Yeah, you get comfortable, and other teams were always always coming out to play yeah. the best rugby against so Wigan. Play, yeah. play, we, we were champions at that time. You know what I mean? We still had some decent players, and people wanted to prove a point. And, We've, we weren't quite there that year, you know what I mean? And yep. we've, we've probably got we've got his arse seen to a few times, so it probably probably one of the toughest year we we did we did have like on the field. But that was also World Cup year, hey? Yeah, the World Cup. Yeah, I, I didn't. We played we played the World Cup Challenge against Canola. Yeah. The, the 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 start of the season, we ended yep. up obviously winning. We, yep. we won it against Canola, so that was pretty big. Like yep. thing for us at the start of the year but when you get to the end of the year and you've not done anything else no one yeah, remembers that, that. I, 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 torn, I torn my deltoid and chipped a bone off of my shoulder in the Canola game so I ended up being out for like three months so I did miss oh, yeah. quite a bit of a chunk of, of that, of that yep. season to be fair but yeah when we ki- when obviously came came across obviously I knew World Cup were, so I wanted to get fit I needed to get fit yep. I wanted to play my first World Cup for England and yep. obviously the call came about from Wayne so yeah so Wayne gave you the call? Yeah. Hey, mate, it's, uh, it's uh, Wayne here. I'm bent off. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I assume Wayne's a big deal in, in, in England too? Yeah, massive, mate. He's yeah. one of the people you have you grow up, obviously you watch the game, but he comes with the game, doesn't he? Like, yeah. I mean, he's, he's, a massive, he's a massive icon in the game. He, yeah. he always has been both sides of the hemisphere, to fair, mate. That's crazy. So you get the, like, did you know he was going to call you? No, it's just like literally, we're just like, all right, sweet, hello, is this type thing? Hey, how you going? He's like, hey, mate. Just, just right. a croaky Australian voice, like, hey, who's this? <laughs> was it, would you, did you think this is a joke? Like, yeah, you do to a fair, you're like, sure, this can't be a, it's not. A, and he's like, no, no, it is, you know, are you sure? Hey, yeah, yeah, it's good, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I'm yeah. me. Um, and so the conversation was just like, man, I'd love you have you in the side or? Yeah, it came over, I think, the year before. I came, we had a meet, we had a team meeting. I think the year before, we had a team meeting, and it came over and 
I remember walking in this room and I was with two other lads and walked in this room and we were stood there and shook his hand and, hey, you all right, mate? Nice to meet you. And what's your name again? And I was like, shit. <laughs> really? <laughs> but he did it to all of us and we were, we were walking off and we were like, fuck. Is he trying to rattle us? Even know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think being in the squad now, you realise that I think he does it to most people. Too. Yeah, he tries yeah, to rally yeah. you, trust so, me. Yeah, yeah. Then obviously, going into the World Cup, yeah, you, I knew him a bit better by yeah. playing under him the previous year. Well, I played under him like I was in your squad 2006, mm. seven, eight. So I, I was yeah, under so him quite a lot. Yeah. So I know all about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that that year with England, you guys get all the way to the grand final. Yeah, yeah, we play that playing over here, obviously as yeah. well. It was, it was mad to be fair. No one really expected us. No. Tong, Tonga came into it that year. Tonga were everyone, everyone decided to play for Tonga. <laughs> you know what I mean? All big dogs and yep. we. No one really gives us a chance if I'm honest with you. Yep. But I remember, we, I remember as a team we all met in Perth, England, and we're like right, it's up, it's up to us now. What we're in charge of, whatever yep. we want to type thing. We had a very really good team, you know what I mean. But I think I'd probably say you could probably ask most of the England team and the, most of the squad in 2000, 2017, I think it was. Yeah. It probably, it's probably the closest team I've ever been involved in. Oh really? Just, just the general people getting on with each other and people yep. enjoying each other's company and. You know what I mean? It, it probably the best tour I've ever been involved in, wow. without a doubt. And do it, you think that was a big Wayne influence, yeah, or do you think that? Yeah, massively. He's he's pretty big on the team being close and everyone yep. looking after one another. And he came in the year before and he he got he put that in in place that year. But yep. obviously throughout the year you don't really see each other. But yeah. then coming into a World Cup, he was massive for the team getting like, being close with each other. And, it, it, I'd, I'd probably say that took us where it got where we where we got to. Hundred yep. percent. Like we all knew we could play rugby. You play, yep. you, you've been chosen for your for your national team. You know what I mean? There's not really much. All you need is a bit of structure, which Wayne give us and the coaching staff give us. But yep. it's about it's the fact of you weren't going on the field and you want to you want to play, play, for, your yeah, play for your mate. Yep. Uh, both people aside, you, you want to give your best for them and you want to leave everything out there for them. And I think that that World Cup year, we 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 really seen. What it actually meant to us all, and oh, yeah. you know what I mean. And yeah, so you start building momentum, um, then that Tonga game happens. Woo! Yeah, it's, we, obviously we knew we were gonna end up facing Tonga on New Zealand. Yep. I think it was, and I remember obviously we played, we got finger Tonga end up getting through, and I remember driving in that game, mate, and, and I've not seen anything like it. Yeah, just red flags all over the place, cars all over the place, and we just. I think we were about, it must have been about 10, 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes away from the stadium. And there were just people walking past and like, surely God, they can't be coming again. Yeah. Surely God, they can't be coming. Yeah. And when we got there, they had to like, had to move everyone out of the way, driving up the street. And it was, it was mad to a fair, mate. It was, yeah. it was class. It was, it was one of them things you like, oh, this is going to be gonna be a good atmosphere, this. And I remember we came out for like the warm up type thing and it was just starting to build. And, Literally for for the kick off once we got out, mate, it was ridiculous. You're just so looking at going. Yeah, wow. it was just fucking. It was just mental. It was yeah. just like you, I've never played in, in front. That's probably the best atmosphere. Like yeah. I played in finals and that, but that atmosphere that day, they were, they just were cool. singing yeah, and that. Just sing. They were just at one point. I thought we thought it was a national anthem that were playing out of the thing. It, it, I thought it national anthem. A, a certain song playing out of the playing for, for the finger speakers but it was them they were just singing throughout the game and oh, yeah. I remember just seeing like little dots of white shirts in crowd from England fans yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, look. there's one, there's one there yeah, there's one yeah, there but and so like what about when Tonga scores or whatever were you just like the crowd was just yeah I think we I think we raced away for like a eight, we were 18 nil up I think it was yeah. we end up 18 nil up and we were like, like comfortable here and I, I think we got a bit too comfortable for yeah. us on good and they scored one and we're like, right, yeah, sweet, we're all good. And yep. scored another. And I'm like, fuck. Oh, boy, looking around, boys, don't, yeah, do yeah, this, yeah, don't do this. Don't do this, boys. We're good, we're good. <laughs> End up scoring another and we're like, fuck. Yep. <laughs> like, this is, it's on now. Yep. And it came down, obviously, to the last, last couple of minutes. And yep. I suppose if you ask Were you it, a part of that tackle? No, Elliot, yeah. it was. Elliot yeah, yeah, Whitehead, 100%, he, he right? never shuts up about it. <laughs> never <laughs> shuts up he about reckons he saved his country. Yeah, and the God he says. But <laughs> <laughs> I think he ended up on his back at one point. That's when he bumped <laughs> off, so he was pretty lucky. <laughs> and so that last two, three, four, five minutes, was it just like, this is nuts? Yeah, because in one hand you have, right, we're going to the World Cup final here. We're actually going to play in a World Cup final. Yeah. And the other hand it's like, Mate, we've still got five minutes left. Yep. Like we need to. And Fafida is running a muck. Yeah, yeah. And Tom Lolo, <laughs> yep. I think he steamed off at 
kick off and manage to make about 60 odd metres. Yeah. And you've got blokes like that just starting to, you know what I mean, starting to throw the weight about and that. And we were just like, we need to hold on, we need to get a grip of this game. And yeah. we, ma- we did manage to pull through it to uh, yeah. it, was, it was good, it was good class feeling at the end of the field. I think I remember at the end of, end of the game, um, I just remember, I remember Chris Ironton running on the pitch, <laughs> like, and he ran on the pitch and we're like, it's game over, and he's like, yeah, yeah, we've won them. We're like, are you sure? Because obviously, they were, they were on try if we were going to go to the screen. Yeah, they, on, they, yeah. And they just ended up blowing whistle, and Chris Hyneton came up to me like, I just tried to get on field as quick as possible so they could go up game. <laughs> <laughs> I was just laughing. At just it, like, so, forced yeah, it to yeah. end, end, end. Yeah, end. so, um, yeah, it was a good feeling to fair that part. Yeah. Once, obviously, I got on phone to mum after, like, mum, did you watch? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, Okay, real good. Like another thing as well. As a kid, you, I think it's thirty. I think it was thirty-two years since England ever reached the grand final. Wow. And I'm like, wow, I'm part of a team that's yep. reached the we, we, we reached the World Cup final. And I'm like, man, it's pretty pretty mad when you. Oh, obviously. you're a part of it. Yeah, Bloody part yeah. of it. So, it was good good feeling to fair after that game. You know what I mean? It's a real good feeling. And so you um so you play Australia, in it's in a World Cup. And you guys keep them relatively low score and keep it. It's yeah. like six, wasn't it? Like six, six nil, six nil, six nil finished up, yeah. Mm. And so, you know, you're playing a team of absolute superstars. What Thurston was? was Thurston still playing? Thurston was yeah, still playing. Thurston, yeah. Smith, Old, Cronk, 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 yeah. Slater. And so, yeah. you know, to keep them to six nil and to, you know, you just had chances to even win it. Mm. Was it? What was it like running out there and everything like yeah, that? Yeah, it was first time I'd been to Suncorp. Oh, really? So yeah, it's pretty, Great pretty, pretty good, pretty good crowd as well. You yep. know what I mean? On the day. <laughs> It was pretty mad to fair. Uh, my mum, and, my mum, my little girl, and my, no, sorry, my grandma, my little girl, and my brother all yep. flew in. So they flew in on the Thursday, Friday, sorry. We played on the Saturday. And yep. Obviously, to look to look out in the crowd and see them there, World Cup final. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's somewhat like my nana, like, oh, I want to see you do this, and to be able to do it for them, it, it, it was pretty surreal. But yep. having the feeling of right, we're only 80 minutes away from. Winning the mm. World Cup finally, you're just like, wow, can, how, can we do it? Yep. And the, the scored, I think it first half, the, the score, yeah, first half, the scored, and it won them, like, right, we don't want to let them score again because as soon as they do that, like, it's just a boom, boom, yep. boom. And I remember being in the game, and I think they were about 60 minutes in, and I remember one of the sets had just went tackle, tackle, tackle. They literally did not pass it from like outside the 20 metre line, they just took drive, drive, and kicked a touch. and we're like we've got him here, like we've got oh, really? him there. We, we felt like we had him on ropes type thing, and it just won them games. It didn't stick for us. We, we, I think as, as right on centre, Cal Watkins, he made a break, and Josh Dugan literally clipped, like ankle tapped yeah, him, and, all, and they all they had to do was well, if he'd have make it, he just had to pass it inside to Elliot. Yeah. I think it was, and it, it was just one of them games. We never really got the little bit like would, would be a little would be a, a pass off or something like that. You know yeah. what I mean? After it, you, you take you take the fact oh we played in the World Cup final, but I think most of the boys after it were gutted that we didn't win it, and yep. most of the other teams would be like, right, they expected Australia to win yep. it, right, we've got there, we'll settle for that, and I think the response from the lads after like it's you probably take a lot more out of that because you, you, we ex- we wanted to we expected the self to win it because we knew yep. what we were capable of and stuff, and mm. it probably obviously it's a long time you're waiting a long time for another World Cup final, but. To another four years later, but you take a lot more out of the loss, and what probably won would have well, obviously, you don't take we would have took a lot out of winning it, but you take the positives out of the loss, yeah, that what we did, and you take massive positives. Like, like I said, no one, no one gives us a no, I was like, I was straight, I was just like, Australia's yeah. gonna fucking yeah. turn up, England will stay in it for yeah. 30 minutes, yeah, like and then, just, doing stuff, yeah. you know what and I mean? then just fall off the game because Australia would just be too much to handle, yeah. And I was just, I was personally surprised at you know, the, the low score for mm. one with that many superstars and also the fact that, yeah, you, you, you could have won it. Yeah, I think, it. I think as a kid growing up in England, mate, you, there's a perspective, right, that Australians are better than us and type yep. thing, which they are a good team on the day, but yep. on our day, we are as well. Obviously, yep. you can see where the players coming over to NRL now and yep, proving totally. themselves over here. And, that were, that was our step. That's what as a nation we need to take that step. We yep. need to you need to you need to knock a big team off to get the get you know what I mean, get the recognition and Wayne, yeah. I think Wayne I think Wayne coming in there is been massive for us with that. It's and like when you go to the ne- next England squad and you go to those younger boys, mm. you're not you're not an older boy looking at Australia like, oh, fuck, that's yeah, Australia. Yeah. You're mm. an older boy but boys, we were there. Yeah, definitely. Like, these aren't these aren't immortals that can that can't be touched kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, I remember I remember being on being on um, Stone Pitch after the after the World Cup final. I remember stood there I was talking to I think Ben Curry, Mark Percival, George Williams, and 
I've the boys that have pretty similar age to me, and yep. I, was, I was saying, listen, we'll we'll get them. We'll, yep. we'll we'll come back and get them. We'll get our time now. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I, I I I do believe in that. I'm, yep. like, I'm, I'm not. I, I don't want to bullshit about. Oh yeah, I just want to say what people hear. Yeah, know, yeah. What, what they want to hear type thing. And that's how <coughs> I felt, and that's why it probably one of the big reasons why I did make the step to come over here to ah, test really? myself. Yeah. Mm. So I guess yeah, you kind of felt like you know. This is this is the level I want to be at. This yeah, is the definitely. level I want to beat, kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. And so you went home, and then the next year is 2018, um, and and the, the the negotiation starts to come over here. Yeah. And then you come, you it gets done, and you're over here, and you know you run out for the Raiders for the first game. What was that like? Round one, yeah. you're playing in the NRL. Yeah, pretty mad, obviously, with the getting it all sorted in 2018, yeah. and like again when we're we're going to war, a lot of people, the cut, Sean Wayne were leaving. Yep. Sam Tonkins ended up leaving. So obviously we're leaving. A few of the other, few of the other younger lads were leaving, and um, that were another close. Like we're very close to the team. You know what I mean? Like they were, yep. they were a good mixture of old and young, and we, we end up get we end up winning Super League again. Oh, Actually, you won Super yeah, League in 2018 yeah, as well. Yeah, in 2018, oh, and it was just like if you've ever heard of a fairy tale, right? Yeah. Sean Wayne's leaving, Sam Tonkins leaving, I was leaving, so he's leaving. Yep. That if. For me, I was like, right, it's not going to happen. Stuff like yeah, this, stuff doesn't like happen. this just doesn't does not yeah. happen. Like you don't go out on the high. There's no always because I think we went we went 13 games unbeaten as well going yep. into going into a grand final. Like fucking hell, this is going to be a game where we lose. Yeah, where this is the game yeah, we yeah. lose. Fuck. And to to win it, mate, it was, <laughs> it was class. It was yep. one of the best feelings. You, one of the best feelings you put up there, and you're like, I remember, I'm gonna remember that for years and years. Did that make it easier to come to Australia? Because like, you know, yeah. you, you, you was closure, like the boys were leaving. Mm. It was the end. We won. Yeah, probably. It's especially with the coach leaving. Yeah. Like, I, I remember when it all came about, me, me start making signing signing for Raiders, and I, I had a meeting with um with Ian Lennigan, the owner of Wigan. I had to go yeah. down to London. It was, and I remember he was like, right, we were gonna sign a new contract here. Or, you're going to tell me that you want to leave. You're pretty straightforward with it, to be fair. And I'm like, right, I, w I just want to take this opportunity because I don't want to be that dickhead when I'm 45 years old. So, you know, yeah, I could have gone to Cameroon yeah, and signed a pub. You know yep. what I mean? Like, yep. uh, like you wonder where you look back and you're like, yeah, of course you could have, mate. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? And yeah. I didn't want to be that bloke. I, even if I came over here for six months and I didn't like it, at least I've done it. Yep. You know what I mean? I'm, I, that's probably one of my biggest fingers. And I remember saying to Ian Lennigan, I said, mate, I just want to give it a crack. And yep. I remember ringing. Uh, Chris Radlinski was well, the chief exec at the time. Said, "Mate, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna obviously choose to go." And he, he was saying, "Oh, good, good that you're leaving and stuff." And I remember ringing Sean Wayne, obviously. He dealt me obviously in 2016 when I had all that yep. shit, and he'd been there for me quite a bit to a fair man. And I remember just saying, "Mate, I, I, I want to come to your house. I want to talk to you." And yep. he just sat me down. And he said, "Mate, if I could, he's been around again for years. He's played plenty. Of, he's, he's coached plenty of top top players, and yep. he just said, mate if if I didn't think you were ready, I'd be pissed off with you. He said, but right. I, I really do think you're ready. And for me, him saying that to me, I was like, right, yep. that's that's my go ahead. And obviously to go on then and win it, and we end up winning it. Obviously <laughs> last last game for us all. And that next three days yeah, would have been yeah. crazy, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was pretty crazy. Too, for that. Like I said, what I can remember. <laughs> I, think yeah, I, ask, I, think, I think if you ask half the lads, I don't think they can remember much. Uh, oh. but it, it was it was a fairy tale ending that you always wanted to do type thing and it's just like it makes it's like somehow life has made that decision uh, yeah. such a tough decision mm. easier you yeah because yeah. you can just say bye it's done we yeah. won you have a closure like you yeah. said you have a closure you, yeah. right like, I'm ready for my next yeah. next adventure type thing and probably I, was, I, I won't lie it's when I did when just before I go and find and stuff I'm like right I'm, I'm doing the right decision here I'm, I'm really yeah. I'm really going to do this and because it hadn't been announced I'm like Still got time to go back on this year. Yeah, like, yeah, I, I yeah. might just ring Wigan and say, "Yeah, I'll take that contract." Yep. Like they were saying, "Oh, you might be, if after Sean Lockley retires, you might have a good chance of being captain of Wigan." Oh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, "Wigan's a massive club, and yep. everyone knows Wigan." And I'm like, "This could be a chance for me to be a legend at, yep. at Wigan." You know what I mean? And it was just probably more so for myself, like not having that regret in life. Yep. You know what I mean? That I, that's what I wanted to do. And when it got announced, I'm like, <laughs> it, it's it, done. It was supposed to be the best day. Like obviously it being announced, I was. I was just like, fuck, it's been an like, yeah, yeah, yeah. answer. Actually, I'm actually doing it yep. now. And obviously, play it's a reality now. Yeah, yeah. It's not just a thing that play, might happen. Play grand final and stuff like that and finished all that. Played for England, finished that and yep. got to like November time and 
you have to start I have to start sorting my house out I have to start renting that out and getting yep. rid of all shit in my house and stuff yep. and moving into the pits yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> literally moved back to my mum's for the December and yep. you, you don't realise how close it's actually getting to it actually is you start having a leaving party out first probably last time I'm going to see yep. most of my mates for a good year or two and stuff yep. like that and you start saying your goodbyes and then it gets to the point I remember the night before, mate. I, honestly, I was in bits. So I was just sat there. Yeah, I, yeah me, I remember being at home with my little girl, my mum. I'm pretty close family, you know. Yep. I mean, my brother and that. And still at that point, I'm like, Fuck, "Am I actually going to do this? Am I actually going to do this?" And mm. I remember getting to the airport, and one thing that I always said to myself, I remember we had to go upstairs. Um, I had to go upstairs to obviously say like where departures and stuff yep. like. That. And I remember turning around and seeing. All my family stood there in, in tears and I was stood there in tears and I was like, I'm gonna make sure I, I need to make sure I'm I'm going over there. I need to I need yep. to make I, I need to do I need to do it. I can't mm. I can't be the it, it, probably the worst feeling I've ever had, mate. It's honestly I'm just ripping my arm and yeah. like Fuck. And it, it's like that, you know, you, you miss them but at the same time as as you said, like you have to do it. Yeah, now. I have if to, you go and fail, yeah, all this pain's for nothing. Yeah, and I've put my family through that and yeah. even though it's even though they, they also want to make a finger, it's, you start thinking, oh, fuck, am I ever going to see him again? Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? What yeah. if something happened? And you do, you think worse. And I even I won't play him coming over, and I was like, I just remember sat there, and it, I, a good job it was pitch black, and I'll just put my head in my hands, and I'll like, cry, and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> was the guy next to you? What's he like, doing? What's up with him? <laughs> like, looked at me, and I'm like, sorry, mate, sorry. And he's like, what's up? I'm like, no, no. Like, I out one for. I was going to start blurting my eye out. Too random, Yeah, too random, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm all good, mate. And, just remember getting here and he, yeah, pretty pretty mad feeling once I got off at playing. First start it was absolutely red hot and yep. I had tracky bottoms on and a jumper and I'm like, what yep. am I doing? I need yep. to just switch and get that off. And did you feel a sense of like um, like loneliness when you got off the plane because you don't really know anyone except yeah. obviously the boys. Yeah, a little bit obviously because the boys want the want, boys want back in training yet. Yep. I came over a bit early. Yeah, <clears throat> it was just after just after New Year, and I remember coming getting drove into Canberra and like I remember driving in. Um, and it pitch black literally I couldn't see anything <laughs> and my mum had bought me a book like just before like a, a book saying things to do in Canberra and they want hardly much in it to fair and I'm like <laughs> what am I going to do when I get but here there's nothing yeah. to do in Canberra anyway yeah, that, that's Canberra. what I mean and <laughs> I remember coming in and Andrew Bishop the like team manager at, at um, Raiders and I remember him saying oh there's so and so museum over there if you want to do that tomorrow and I was just I remember sitting back at car and I put my head in my hand and thought that, <laughs> it must museum. be taking piss <laughs> museum. it must be I thought, like, that surely he got surely laid have got to me more than that here. And I remember going to my hotel room and got him for my mum. I went, Mum, fucking museum. <laughs> a said, fucking museum. <laughs> oh yeah. my God, that's so, crazy. There's a museum. He's surely yeah. taking the piss. Surely he's taking that's, the piss. Yeah, so. Could you imagine, like, you rock up, like, oh yeah, sweet man, I'll just go to the museum yeah. and just, like, just walk around, like, just checking shit out. Yeah, <laughs> I just remember that. And I sat in an hotel room and I knew the lads weren't here for another couple of days. And I'm yeah. like, what am I going to do and, yep. but like I said the longer you stay the more you get used to yeah, yep. so when the lads started coming in <coughs> obviously seeing Elliot and stuff like that and seeing Sutty and seeing Odgy and then obviously went to meet the lads at training and stuff yep. it, it, it starts getting a lot easier the, yep. the lads here have a spot on you know what I mean they're, yep. they're pretty, pretty similar to me they're all up for having a good laugh and having yep. a good time and you good crack and stuff so that probably helped me settle in a lot, a lot faster and so your debut like for, for the club, you're running out round one. Who did you play round one, Raiders? Who did you play round one? No. Gold Coast. Gold Coast. played in Gold Coast, yeah. And you touched them up. Yeah, yeah we, did, <laughs> we, we did pretty decent. Um, and so, yeah, you're up on the Goldie. Actually, yeah, you just walked past the bar, but you're up on the Goldie and um, you make your debut, you run out. What, what was the whole feeling like? Yeah, like, wow. I remember going into it. Um, I, didn't, I didn't play any trial games, so I I, 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 I did. I brought my rib in, in pre-season. Oh, and also, I was like... I wanted to get a start and Mate, right, you know what I mean and I was just like am I going to be ready type thing and we were yep. like oh we'll just put it out as a, a strain a strain beside that's what we chucked it out as in media oh really yeah. it's just a strain because you didn't want that extra pressure yeah. of like oh he's broken his ribs yeah, and, no, right, type yeah. thing and I remember coming into it and I'm like right I'm going to be ready and Ricky was like oh you play loose forward We'll stint you and stuff like that and I said no no I'll, I'll, wanna, I'll play for later and they're like no you sure and I'm like mate I'll play for later don't worry about it I'll get through it and uh, luckily enough we got up to Gold Coast and they were absolutely pissing it down perfect uh, England <laughs> yeah. weather you're in no, England like, bro <laughs> <laughs> so I managed obviously it was still pretty muggy that yep. type thing but played obviously running out for running out for Raiders it was 
great feeling. Pretty big on heritage and club numbers and that over yep. here, you know what I mean? Mm. It was pretty big for me. It was pretty special to get a number, uh, 354, and it yep. was pretty, pretty big time, you know what I mean? Okay, How nice. much it means to the club and like what what caliber of player they've played before us and stuff yep. like that, you know what I mean? So it was a good feeling just yep. to get out there and just, just to get the win to a fair mate. Yeah. We started off, started off as a win because quite a lot of the talk in pre season, we, we spoke about outside last season which they managed to lose games by two points or yeah, managed to yeah. lose them they, and they went on a, like a continuous run of that and just one it's a big relief of pressure just starting off well and mm -hmm. you know what I mean we, we're yep. putting a good team performance you know what I mean yep. it was good for us we played we started off pretty well and yep. that's what we needed that's what we wanted we had obviously me making my debut I think we had Corey Osborne making his debut Bailey Bailey on the wing made his debut Sutton made his debut yep. first game back for Jack White in, yep. in, a, in a few months so it was good to, for us all to get out there and just yeah. get, get out of the way with it's um, that round one game so so <coughs> you've played seven games now yeah seven games yeah. and so you know obviously you've still got a long year to go but the form you've been in and obviously you're not going to sit and go I'm fucking killing it but <laughs> the form you've been in has been really really good and I don't know with, I don't know whether this is some of the best footy you've ever played but from a perspective of just an NRL fan mm. you know NRL fans think you're playing fantastic is that is that making it not easier because you're obviously going to still miss home but what's it, what's it like you know you've come to the NRL the hardest competition mm. and you're playing really good footy and outplaying your opposite number regularly you know Give or take every game, what's it like? Yeah, it's it's it's, pretty, uh, it's, it's a good feeling, obviously, to yep. know that you you're going well. And I said to myself, I said, oh, get over here and just have a good preseason. Like mm. I, I've not really had a proper preseason back home because would 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 play for it, play for England, yep. which are fi finish England halfway through December, and we're back in in January, straight back yeah, into okay. it. I knew I knew we didn't start till later on over here. I think it's uh, is it March time? We, is it no, yeah, March, March, March yeah. pre-seasons here actually start yeah, in November or yeah, yeah, October. Yeah, and I knew we didn't start the game so March, so I thought this is going to give me a good eight eight weeks yep. training-wise, getting fit, getting stronger, and mm. getting plenty of time in the gym, and I thought, just get that under my belt and just take each game as it comes well a yeah. bit, and that's what I've just tried to carry on doing. I, I'm not I'm not one for looking forward about stuff, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm not one for looking back as well. Probably when I was younger, I'd probably beat myself up about certain things, and I want to because you want you want to play well, no matter yeah. what. Everyone wants to play well, but you're not you're not going to be 100 percent ever again. You're not, not going to be spot on everything you do. And I probably took more of that learning learning the game more and understanding the game. And like I said, making sure my bad games are still a consistent yep. a, a eight out of ten or when are good games, you, you want to be a ten out of ten or I don't know if there's such thing as ten out of ten, but you want to be yep. close to that. Yeah, <clears throat> and that's what. Obviously, I've tried to do each game as it comes, and yep. even more so playing with the players that I'm playing with. We've got a we've got a really good team here at the moment, mate. Yep. Probably, I would been training and stuff like, that and, and and just going from there, like what what Ricky wants us to do, and yep. he's probably a pretty similar coach to the one that I had back home in Sean Wayne. He's Ricky's passionate about it, and yep. you know what I mean. He wants you to leave everything out there, but he's he's got the knowledgeable side of it. Obviously, playing the game himself. Yep. And, I've just just want to go out there and enjoy it. To fair, yeah. The biggest thing for me, mate. If you're not doing something, if you're not enjoying what you're doing, you're not gonna, you're not really gonna. Yeah, be, nah, you know no what I mean? You know what I mean? You're so. not gonna enjoy it at all. And I, I do enjoy it. I, I love going out there. And I'm probably, I don't really know what I'm gonna do. What I'm picture myself to fair. I'm yeah. one of the players that I'll just just do just go go with the floor type thing. Yeah. Whatever I see in front of me, I'll go over it. Yeah. That's how I probably moulded myself as a player to fair. It's, Ricky and Ricky said to me, he said you if you see someone there, you go for it and yep. having the confidence as you, from your coach and Massive. you know what I mean. Even if, even the boys like if I see someone, I'm like hey, give me ball, give me ball. I'll try this, I'll do this, and yep. you know what I mean. And that's how I, that's how I look at my game really, and that's what I just take each game as it comes. But that's what I continue to do really. Have you been? I mean, you're an international English player, so obviously you're at you're at the NRL level. <coughs> but have you been not surprised, but you know how well you've taken off as in in the first did you think it was going to take okay it's going to take you know five six games for I kind of find my groove or or was it something that like no you had confidence in your ability that when you got here you'd you'd make a mark kind of thing probably not as quick no yeah I'll be honest with you it's coming over to all different competitions and stuff massive. like that you know the, the standard the standard competition over here is massive you know what I mean yep. you're not going to have a get you're not going to have a t you're not going to be able to turn up against a team one week and play good then next week play play average and get the win you're not going to do, no. do that you need to be on your game throughout, yeah. the, throughout the whole season and yeah probably I didn't really expect to I just thought right I'll find my feet and I'll find my feet and just go with it but probably 
like how I look at the game, I, I always want to win. Like yep. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not passionate about winning. I'll do most of anything to win and stuff like that. You know what I mean? I'll go out there and I just want to win. And yep. I just want to. I just want to. I, I, I'm one of them players. I want to walk off the field and hopefully, like the teammates that I play with, say, "Yeah, I, I enjoy playing with him." And yep. you know what I mean? It, it'll be that player that's willing to do that extra thing for me. And yep. that's what I want to be. I want to get the respect of the boys, and that's my goal. And that's what that's what I continue to do. And yeah, I probably didn't expect to to like fall into it as fast as what I did, but yep. it's probably a big credit to the lads that I'm playing with. They've they've helped me yep. fall into it as quick as what I am. And having them boys around me and stuff like that and it's, it's been really good for me and so what's if the next 12 months is perfect for you where are, where are you in 12 months time what are you doing um, just won an NRL premiership yeah <laughs> sat there with boys having a beer reminiscing how good it's been <laughs> really hey, hey, fuck. That's, that's the dream for me that, yeah just yeah just continually playing well yep. you know what I mean just I, my own performance I want to I want to get better. I, yep. wanna, I was still only twenty five, and mm. still want to carry on kicking on. I want to, yep. you know what I mean. I want to, I want to go out there and play the best rugby I can play, really. But I want to, I want to be successful. There's, yep. no, there's no point doing. I don't. Th- I personally don't think there's no point taking part in a sport where you don't want to win. Yep. If you don't want to win, you might as well not take part in it altogether. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, 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 it's funny because like um, a lot of people say, "Oh, why don't you just play like local league sport or whatever." Mm. And I'm like, because if I'm playing sport, I have to. We're go- I'm going all the way. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I can't do anything yeah. otherwise. Like as a kid, I've always been. Like I said, with my brother, <coughs> it's always been me or him winning. Yeah. I've always wanted to win. You know what yeah. I mean? And I'll, I'll always. I'm, I probably as that kid. I probably lose, and I'm. I'd probably take my football. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, it's my football. Yeah, you're not having it right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And walk off. And but then like same as same as what I do with rugby, I, I really want to win. And yeah. I, I, I do anything to win, and yep. you know what I mean. The bot, like playing with playing with the lads and stuff like it means more to me than what yeah. anything else does. And to be, yeah. able to, to be able to go out end of this year and win something with Canberra Raiders, and just just bring a bit bring a bit back to Canberra as well. We've not won out for yeah. quite quite a lot of years. You know what I mean? It's yeah. it's a city that's probably they're relying on us to to do well this year. You know what yep. I mean? It's last year, the 2016 was probably the best year they've had so yep. far in a few years. So. Just bring a bit back to the city as well, mate. It's, you can see that the, the fans get behind you. Oh, they were massive yeah, in 2016. Yeah, massive, you know what yeah. I mean? The, the, the Broncos game the other week, mate, they were, they were massive. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's a great experience coming out to the Viking Cup. It's, it's pretty, yeah, pretty it's good cool, experience, right? you know what I mean? It's, and to be able to go out there and win, so it's not going to be easy. We know it's not going to be yeah. easy. We know we know what's ahead of us. And yeah. probably, probably going from the Manly game at the weekend that we lost and... We, we we take quite a bit out of that, you know. You, you take stuff out of games that you win, but you probably yep. take more out of games that you lose because oh, you improve for them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's probably what my aim and thing is at end of this year. Yeah. Continue playing good with myself, but I want to win something with the lads, and yep. that's that's what I really want to do. Sweet. Um, ask all the boys. This favorite rapper of all time. Favorite rapper. If you're a rapper man. Well, I'm not really a rapper man. To be fair, okay. probably. Eminem. Eminem? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I fucking love watch, Eminem. Watch eight, 8 Mile all the time when, when I was a kid and stuff. Oh, like how good was it? So. I went and seen Eminem recently. Yeah, I oh, did you? Oh, yeah. my God. It was so Pretty good, good in it. I mean, yeah. I had some uh, extra, I had some drinks. Let's just say I had some drinks. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and it was a good time. Um, Favourite movie of all time? Favourite movie. <clears throat> a few decent ones to be fair. What was the first thing that came to your mind? Like, even if Rocky. Like a, probably Rocky? Say. Yeah. I, don't, I mind a bit of boxing as well. Oh, I love so boxing, I don't bro. mind a bit of boxing, so... You gonna watch Canelo Jacobs this weekend? Yeah, probably. Yeah, I'm still I'm still trying to get my time difference with America in the year, so I'm not too sure what time it'll it's be. It's um twelve o'clock, I think. Twelve o'clock. The, the card starts at twelve. Tw- midday. Don't yeah, don't midday. quote me on that. Yeah. Gino. Sunday. <laughs> I'll hold you to twelve it. o'clock. <laughs> you bring that. You fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I missed You're it. Lame, <laughs> um, and uh, best prank you've ever seen. Best prank. <laughs> probably as a kid when I signed for Bradford, you know, he probably were on me as well. Um, as, as captain at the time with Andy Lynch. And I, I'm like, I, I, I like my trainers. I've always liked my trainers and stuff. And I remember every day I went into training, and he cut straight down the middle of all my laces. <laughs> and I, I, just as a young kid, I was like, "What the fuck's going on here?" So first time I thought, "Oh, someone must be taking piss." Yeah. yeah. Second day I came in, both shit, same again. 
third day and it went on for about a week. Oh. So I thought, right, I'm coming in. I had to come in, I had to come in training like flip flops, like flip flops and thongs yeah, is what you yeah. call them over here. Yeah. Come in, both were cut straight down them as well. So like, <laughs> what we're gonna do? So one day, like I had to obviously my granddad used to drop me off at the time. Yeah. I'd have to get the trainers, put them in a the bag, <laughs> hide them in training ground, then get them after training. Because <laughs> they just so, kept yeah. on it. Then when I did that, he kept on trying to put um DP in my boxes. <laughs> so yeah. they were just at the lo- yeah. young lad, at the young lad. Yeah, just making sure we knew we knew we knew what what, <laughs> what, 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 the, what the what the crack was. Fucking hell, that's um that, that would that's fucking piss that yeah, would piss no, me off, man. It's, it's so frustrating. You just yeah. want to get out of there, yeah. boom, cut yeah. laces, <laughs> and then you got to buy a new ones, especially new trainers and oh, stuff like that. Right. Also, yeah. And also, like laces off the shelf aren't the same as no, the laces not, no, that yeah. you get yeah that's bullshit so, uh, um yeah thanks for, so much for coming on brother i appreciate yeah. it yeah. um yeah it's been good man it's just yeah I, I love watching you play and and it's it's the thing with you know especially when i was coming through as an australian and this is just speaking honestly we when english players came over we'd always be like probably mm, like yeah. you know they're not going to be ready for the standard yeah. but with yourself sammy burgess you know whitehead Hodgson, like Hodgson on his day is one of the best hookers in the yeah. comp. Sammy Burgess is one of the best forwards in the comp. Currently, you're playing as one of the best forwards in the comp. So the numbers are, are increasing mm. every single year. So And you're at the front of that. So yeah, is that absolutely. something that makes you proud as an Englishman? Yeah, definitely. It's, like you said, uh, with the boys that have come over, you know what I mean? I remember as, as a kid, I remember Sammy coming over. And, yep. You know what I mean? He's a very close mate of mine and stuff like that. And I remember just like just all the taking the step type thing and that, just putting, putting us putting the country on the map in, in a way. Yep. I remember James Graham coming over pretty close to Jammer and how good, is, how good they've done over, you know yeah, what I mean? They're probably the first two blocks that came over and really put a stamp down for, yep. for England, you know what I mean? And put, oh, us, put oh, us on yeah. the map in a way, I'd probably say. Yeah, it probably Morley, Adrian Morley. Yeah, Adrian, Adrian Morley, yeah, I, I, I wasn't probably old old enough. enough I, didn't that, really yeah. get, I didn't really well get to see But he was just like a, Adrian Morley player. a one-off, like he was the one pommy yeah, yeah. kind of thing. That's the way we saw him. But like the thing with like, Burgess and Graham, like they're loved by Australia. Yeah. Like, like Australians love them as players, and they don't. Even, they obviously still see them as pommies, but they're not to us anymore. Yeah. They're like one of us. It's, it's it's strange, but yeah, that's what probably that's a big thing for me as well. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? The fans like you, you know what I mean. You have to go somewhere. And yeah, be liked. You want to be liked. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everyone wants to be liked in life. You, you know don't what I mean? Yeah, if you hate it, it makes rock up here. I was like, get yeah, the fuck out of here. It's a bit tougher for you, but that's probably even more so. Bit like yeah. people liking you as well. You know what I yeah. mean? It's from them it's, it does help you settle in a lot but a lot oh, easier mate, 100% and also uh, like I hope that our uh, Raiders do go well because then you'll get to because in 2016 they went well mm. my, the crowds that they were getting were yeah. fucking crazy so yeah a few of the boys have said how good it was like around the city it was and massive, stuff like that, so. massive um, anyway go thanks so much for coming cheers, on brother mate, appreciate thank it you for me. Boom. thank you cheers